We're inside the coach's office which, with head coach and general manager Derek Lalone. Derek, first and foremost, uh, you guys are rolling in your last 11, 9 1 and 1 uh, after a tough start. What has been the difference for your team? Well, I think overall team play, obviously, our locker room's coming together. Uh, it's good being at the rink right now. Guys want to be together. You know, one of the goals of any team is to come together as a team. And anytime you're going through a stretch like we are, we're 12, 2, and 1, I don't care what the sport is, obviously, we're clicking in the locker room. So that was number one. I think it started from our net out. Mike Rotolo has been very good for us. Our young D have come around and it's translated to our skilled forwards finding the back of the net. Uh, we're doing things right. We're playing the game right. I know it sounds like a cliche, but good offense starts with good defense. We're taking care of our end. We're detailed in our end. Good stick detail, good D zone detail. Our weak side wing is very detailed, and that's leading to offense the other way. And Friday, a couple of our goals were direct reflection of that. We're good in our end. We got up ice. We got some line rushes four, activated our D. Fell in the back of the net. Talk a little bit about a activating your D. You see Jake Linhart, you see Brandon Kirk scoring goals. How important is it for your defenseman to join the rush and, and get those opportunities? Well, we've been scoring a lot of goals lately. And anytime you can get offense chipped in from your D, it's key. And, and I think the style of play with me here over the last couple of years, we're going to be very aggressive. We want to activate our D. And I think our young D, as they're starting to get comfortable in their own end and comfortable with their own game, you're going to see them flourish a little bit offensively, and that's the case. And, uh, you know, Jake's goal was a classic deactivation goal where he was defending uh, net front. Um, we got the turnover. Uh, we went up on the line rush, and he beat his guy up ice, was a trailing D-man. Kyle Novak made a great play for him, and he buried it in the back of the net. The goal, he had no chance. So uh, we want our D to be aggressive, um, but we want it done correctly. And right now they're, they have a good feel of, of how that's going. Let's talk a little bit about uh, between the pipes. Mike Rotolo struggled earlier in the year, has put it together in the last 10 games. He's now risen to third in the league in goals against average and save percentage. Talk a little bit about his development. The, the, one, the one thing I can say about him, he seems like a goaltender that never gets rattled, and that's very important uh, in the USHL. Well, he probably reflects our team. You know, He started out early. He was shaky. He wasn't confident. And we were going through a lot of that as a team on a whole. Uh, now he, you can just see his body language, his confidence, his mental preparation has been very good. The start of his games have been very sharp. And like you said, you know, things don't rattle him. I, I like how he's responded after goals. Friday night was a perfect example. We played a very good third period. We go into the third period up 5-2, and they score a quick power play goal. We have a defensive zone breakdown. They get two goals in 15 seconds. All of a sudden, it's 5-4. That should have been a huge momentum swing. Our team handled it extremely well. Mike handled it extremely well. Uh, he played very well in his last 9, 10 minutes. Uh, we didn't give up many good scoring chances, and uh, we found a, a way to win a game that we may not have a month ago. So that kind of personality for Mike is the same personality our team is, is taking on right now. Uh, we're learning how to win. We're finding ways to win. How important was that win against Chicago? Talk about a team that was just a couple points behind you in the standings, of course. It's a different USHL this year with only four teams making the playoffs, uh, keeping in the middle of the pack. So, uh, you know, my question to you, Derek, uh, very impressive win against a good Chicago team, and, and the importance was there. Well, you, you, well, we've had this turnaround from our slow start, to whatever, our 12-2-1, 10-1 stretch, whatever run right now. We've beaten Chicago three times in that stretch, and Chicago has proven themselves to be a top team in the East with their fast start and, and how they've done against the rest of the league. So to have three quality wins in a row against a team we're going to be jockeying with position all year is vitally important and key. So those were big games. Our guys approached it as such, and I, I really like the way we performed as a team uh, in Friday's win and against the three straight we've had uh, over Chicago. Another big game coming up here. It seems like they just keep getting bigger and bigger, but the Dubuque Fighting Saints are here uh, this Friday night at the Rush Center. And if you look on paper, the Dubuque Fighting Saints have gotten the better of the Green Bay Gamblers uh, record-wise. However, the series has been a lot closer than what fans may think. One, we're very excited to get Dubuque at this time of the year. They have proven themselves by far being the best team in the league, somewhere like a 21-3 and record. That's an unbelievable clip. And we all know how tight the USHL is, how tight this division is right now. To have a record like they have, it's a credit to Jim McKenzie and his staff. It's an amazing job they've done, an amazing team they have right now. So it's a very good measuring stick. 
but we think we've made improvements, especially from the last time we played. We have played them three times. We're 0-2-1 against them. Um, and the last thing, but we've played them very well. Uh, the last time we faced them, we had a Friday-Saturday game. It was right after we faced a big suspension. We had three, four players out of suspension. We had some injury. We just didn't field a very good roster that night. But we played well in both those games. Well, we put ourselves in a position where we could have won both those games, gave ourselves a chance. They were simply a better team than us. So it would be a very good measuring stick on where we are. We have a long ways to go. We talked about it last week. We've done a good job turning ourselves into a winning team, turning ourselves into a playoff caliber type team. Now can we make the stride into a championship team? Now, right now, Dubuque's playing like a championship team. So this would be a very good uh, test for us come Friday. I guess one last question for you, Derek. What's the confidence level like in this locker room uh, for our guys? They're extremely high. And, you know, every Monday we, we have a team meeting. We go over things we're going to accomplish throughout the week. And uh, we always evaluate where we were last week and goals for the week ahead. And one thing we talked about was uh, some defining some goals right now. One, we simple, I know it's simple, we need to make the playoffs. And uh, we had that goal, we need to get better. And uh, I had the coaches approach me after, uh, excuse me, the captains approach me after, and they still think they can win the Anderson. Now that would be a really tall order with our slow start and uh, how tough the East is with Muskegon, how well they're playing, how well uh, obviously Dubuque is playing. And those are two teams that are very detailed. I don't see those teams going on long losing streaks. But I just it speaks volumes to the confidence of our guys right now, uh, and that's a good sign. All right, thanks, Coach.